the seminar. And today we, uh, we will focus the presentations related to the atmospheric aerosols. And uh, we are going to have presentation and also uh, about modeling, the emissions and atmospheric modeling. We are going to have presentations about uh, particles uh, and emissions factors by Regina Miranda and Guilherme Pereira. And then we are going to have the atmospheric modeling with Edmilson Freitas and Leila Martins. And uh, 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 followed by the emissions modeling by Ricky Noy and Rafaela Cruz. Uh, uh, I like to ask people to keep the, the microphone mute during the presentations, and after the presentations, we are going to have time for questions. Thank you again, and please uh, like to ask. You Não posso porque eu vou fazer a apresentação. É que está tendo uma reforma aqui no apartamento de cima da minha casa, mas eu não posso fechar. É. So, so I'm sorry about the noise, but uh, we have some house renovation close to my my apartment here. I'm sorry. Um, maybe they stop in some moments. I don't know. <laughs> then so this. Can... Yeah, okay, Regina, please. We can start now. <laughs> okay, thank you, Fatima. Um, this project uh, is related to Metro Clima and uh, intends to study the relationship between chemical composition and optical properties of atmospheric aerosol in Sao Paulo. In addition to Maria de Fátima and me, Marcia Yamasoy and Newton, Évora, Rosário also participate. So, although the concentration and composition of particulate matter in Sao Paulo have been studied for a long time, it's still important to study particles, because it's one of the pollutants that most contributes to poor air quality in Sao Paulo, and is harmful to human health, and can influence the radiation balance of the atmosphere. So here in this figure, it's possible to see uh, that ozone and fine particulate matter still have high concentrations in Sao Paulo. For example, this figure show the, the, the increase in the fleet in the, the last 30 years, so increase in the fleet, but in spite of this increase, Due to programs of for controlling emissions, the importance decreased, but not ozone and particulate matter. So uh, it's important to continue these pollutants. The main objective is of this study. So uh, is the, the end to study the relationship between the chemical composition of the aerosol and the uh, optical properties using data, data collected to the surface, close to the surface, and the data uh, integrated in the atmospheric column and try to evaluate the relationship between the columnar optical radiative information of the aerosols and the characteristics of the particles obtained in the surface on the surface so we can try to to mix surface instruments uh, satellites and uh, data integrated in the column the instruments are in the East Campus of the University of Sao Paulo, so close to Guarulhos Airport. And in blue, here we can see important highways. Here, an industrial area and the important traffic highways. Here are the instruments to monitor, to monitor the aerosol, part of sol, uh, dicotomos and uh, a black carbon monitor 
And for optical properties, a shadow band radiometer, a sun photometer, CMEL from Aeronet, and also a nephelometer. And the instruments are in the, the, as I said, in the East Campus of the University. Due to the pandemic and limitations, it has not yet possible to have many results. Here, the black, black carbon concentrations since last year, July 2019. So it's possible to observe higher concentrations in the winter months. For example, now, in the last weeks, we have high concentrations for black carbon. And the day, daily profile for this pollutant shows higher concentrations at night due to the worst conditions of uh, dispersion, but also related to heavy vehicles, since they cannot circulate in the peak hours. So have a, we have a high uh, circulation during the night, and it's possible to see in this daily profile that the pollutant is very related to heavy vehicles. The black carbon is very related to heavy vehicles. Here, more results for the, the for black carbon, relating uh, black carbon and again heavy vehicles during the first days of restrictions due to the pandemic in São Paulo. So from March, here we can see the the the, the month of the days in the month of March. So in the last days of March, we can see a decrease in black carbon, in black, the, the black line. And uh, also uh, a small decrease in the, the vehicles, the total vehicles, heavy vehicles. So again, the, this pollutant, it's important and very related to heavy vehicles. Here, more results for instruments on the surface, concentrations of fine particulate matter, black carbon, and scattering coefficients since February. These scattering coefficients uh, um, are from nephelometer, integrating nephelometer in three wavelengths. So higher concentrations, higher values again in the, the, the winter months, in the last weeks. A drop, again, we can see the, the, the pandemic effects here, a drop in the end of March, as in the last, next, last picture for black carbon. So the idea is to relate all this data the surface data, uh, PM2.5, black carbon, scattering coefficients, and others that I will show now. And, uh, but some analyses are still missing. Here, considering now data in the atmospheric column, aeronet data, this figure shows the relationship between Angstrom exponent alpha in different seasons of the year, from data from August 2016 until now, now until 2012, the winter months have higher aerosol optical death values, may be related to biomass burning also, and uh, uh, of course to the, 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 to the the worst conditions of dispersion. But it's important to see, however, that the Angstrom exponent variability here is slightly less than in the summer months. For example, here, the Angstrom variability and aerosol optical death. So in the summer months, it's different. 
And uh, this behavior indicates the more fine, fine particles suspended in the atmosphere. For example, here, September, October, and November may be related to better, to, to worse conditions, dispersion conditions, and also biomass burning. We can see high aerosol, optical death, and the, the angstrom exponent is slight variability is slightly less than in February, for example, here. So this behavior has to be more investigated. So we intend to relate surface data and uh, chemical composition. As I said, we, we can have some uh, episodes for biomass burning. And from August to October, Sao Paulo can be affected by biomass burning from the center of Brazil. Here, a case study for Sao Paulo in 2016. So we can relate surface data, uh, satellite data, and uh, aeronet data, so column, atmospheric column data. So here, a case study, we can see the, the, the smoke plume close to Sao Paulo, this uh, aerosol optical death retrieved, retrieved by mode sensor. So when the, the, the optical death increased, surface concentrations also increased, we can see here the size distribution. And uh, we could see also lower angstrom exponent here, aeronet data, and again, uh, an increase in aerosol optical depth as shown here by modes images. So, it's possible to relate the, the different instruments, surface and uh, satellite and uh, column instruments. So as soon as sanitary conditions are low, uh, we intend to have the chemical composition, X-ray fluor fluorescence or particles, collected by uh, partisol and uh, dichotomos. And multi-filter radiometer data will also provide optical parameters like angstrom exponent and uh, aerosol optical depth. Uh, nephelometer software will provide size distribution and uh, using these, these samples, uh, surface samples, um, chemical composition, and the column data and satellite data, uh, we intended to have the relationship between the, the chemical composition of the aerosol and optical properties, investigating uh, events of uh, biomass burning and the uh, other one and uh, related to traffic and uh, other sources. Okay. So, thank you. Thank you, Regina, for the presentation. Uh, as I said at the beginning, we are going to have the questions at the end of the presentations. And please, if you want, you can put your question on the chat here or in the YouTube also. And it can be in Portuguese or in English. And then at the end, we are going to ask the people to, to discuss. And now I'd like to invite Guilherme Pereira. He is going to talk about some measurements of the emissions factors. Good, good afternoon. I'm, uh, I'm putting here the presentation uh, from the uh, window. And can you see the slides? Not yet. Está ah, chegando, Guilherme, agora sim. Ok. Uhum. 
ना ओके इट यू सी चेंजिंग द द स्लाइड्स Ah, ok, eu vou, eu vou compartilhar então a tela inteira. Eu queria evitar de compartilhar inteira, mas fica vindo uns avisos às vezes. É... Agora tá bom, né? Ah, ok, então. Hum. Ah, não, ok. Tá bom agora. Ok. É... Okay. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, this is my presentation about particulate matter, uh, about the emission factors uh, of the particulate matter in different studies we are performing uh, in both Metro Clima and also Sopro project, which is another project associated to. Well, introduction here. Um, the Metropolitan uh, Air of São Paulo has some challenges concerning pollutant uh, controller regulation. Historically, urban planning has Uh, has always uh, prioritized the, the road transport, uh, cars and buses, and um, uh, vehicle emissions have, be, have become the main uh, the main source in the last years. Since uh, the 1980s and 1990s, industries have moved to other cities, and there is a fleet increase in the late 2000s. Uh, well, uh, the fleet. Uh, The fuel of fleet is in constant change, so it's important to evaluate the road traffic, uh, road traffic contribution. For that, we have vehicle emission factors, which is the amount of chemical species emitted by mass of the, the fuel con consumed, by distance uh, driven or energy. Uh, for that, previously, uh, studies have been performed in Sao Paulo in the years of 2004 and 2011. And uh, another important issue is the no-exhaust sources. Since uh, they become important, since no-exhaust technologies uh, are emerging, and they include uh, important sources uh, that are independent of uh, fuel combustion. They they are related to road dust suspension, tire and wear emissions. So even in electric cars, they are they will be present. Well, uh, here we uh, this is the project SOPRO. And topological uh, source profile of particulate matter in the air. Sopro is kind of associated with Metro Clima because we use both Guilherme, um, uh... we are not uh, hearing you now. Você está nos escutando, Guilherme? Both them. Uh, this, uh, Guilherme, um... Guilherme uh, você repete aqui a introdução, porque havia parado o som, por favor. Voltou o som? Voltou. Agora voltou, agora voltou. Repete a introdução, então? Isso, Guilherme, começa a introdução, por favor. Ok. Oh, Guilherme, acho que é só essa slide, né? Isso aqui? 
bem, só o outro. Esse, esse foi bem, Guilherme, só o outro slide. Aí. Isso. Não, esse foi bem, pode passar esse no outro slide que você estava discutindo, né? Ou é esse Isso. já? Tá. Acho que era esse já, Fátima, que, que faltou então, só. Por favor, você começa nesse? Ok. Sorry for technical problems here. Uh, well, uh, I'm going to describe the, the, the project SOPRO, which is uh, associated with, with metroclima, the chemical technological source profile of white plate matter in urban air uh, project, which will provide a detailed data database for the city of Sao Paulo. This will include measurements uh, and, and is including uh, measurements of the profiles of the sources concerning levels and composition of PM10 to PM10.5. This will include you know, you know, measurements which uh, uh, has, have uh, already been performed, taken emissions uh, in pizzerias and, and steakhouses, which is an a important source but not studied before, road dust sampling, and also a dynamometer sampling, which, uh, which is going to, to be performed, uh, performed soon. Well, I'm going to describe here the, the chemical. Uh, the chemical uh, features we're, we're going to determine concerning the, the, the chemical analysis. Uh, the water soluble ions are a great fraction of particulate matter. They can, be, uh, they can come from primary emissions and secondary formation. The, the metals are also important. They are related to primary sources. And the um, characteristic of uh, different sources. Uh, so it's, it's possible to differentiate the sources with the metal concentration. And an important uh, fraction is the carbonaceous species, which uh, comprises from 10 to 50% of PM10. And they include organic carbon, which can come from primary, primary emissions or secondary formation. They include different species, such as the polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons and alpines. And there's also elemental or black carbon, depending on the, on the way they, they are determined. And they're mostly related to primary emissions, usually uh, vehicular emissions in, in urban areas. Okay. Well, uh, I'm, I'm going to describe uh, an important uh, organic uh, species uh, uh, class, which are, are the polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbon predates. They are formed in the incomplete combustion of hydrocarbons and usually above 500 Celsius degrees, and is a free radical reaction. Uh, that occurs. Some diagnostic zone ratios can be used in order to differentiate sources concerning pH, and some of them are characteristic of sources, such as retin, which is associated to biomass burning, and chronine, which is mostly related to, to nuclear emissions. And, uh, by what my, uh, I have uh, the results now, uh, we're going to see that's more related to gasoline emission. Well, there are, this is, some of them are carcinogenic and mutagenic, and also uh, they have nitro, nitrated and oxygenated derivatives, the nitro and oxidative. Uh, these species, some of them can be more carcinogenic or mutagenic than uh, the cryptos. Okay. Uh, next slide now, not working. Okay, sorry, uh, there was a, an interruption. I think. Okay, now it's back. Well, uh, I'm going to describe the sampling sites now. The, firstly, the Rodonel, in which we performed the uh, sampling campaign in 2018. It includes both high dirt vehicles and low dirt vehicles. Uh, and also, uh, which is a low dirt vehicle impact planning. We performed the same the same period uh, uh, sampling camping there, and after that we performed uh, environmental uh, camping in the inside the university campus at the Institute of Chemistry. First intensive camping in 2019 during winter, and now extensive lockdown camping uh, in 2020. Well. Uh, here we have the methodology for the, for the, the, the sampling in the, in the 
uh, and PM2.5 were collected out, both outside and inside the, the tanks to check how much the how, how, how much impact that is inside it in concerning particulate matter. Uh, a sampling of 12 hours was performed. And uh, a dust track was, was also employed in order to be or 2.5 uh, inside it. And also a, a sampling of road dust using this equipment here, which is a road dust sampler. sampler. It collects in the, in the asphalt. And in the Institute of Chemistry, at the rooftop of the, the Institute, we performed this environmental sampling campaigns, at least for the 2019. In 2010, we changed the, the sampling site. But we collected PM2.5 there for 24 hours with a high volume. Well, um, then after that, we performed this cooking emissions, uh, which is use of this, uh, how can I say, this equipment here, in, in which we we performed sampling for pizza uh, preparing with food burning, stove uh, food auto preparing with, with gas fuel. And also a barbecue preparing with charcoal. We construct the dissolution chamber in order to, to have a temperature reduction near to ambient temperature uh, with the, the with clear with a clean air input. And also to perform this down to perform a gas to part uh, to simulate a gas to particle conversion. And after that, above in the stack above, we collected the samples. Uh, Using moody uh, impactor, uh, we collected with low vol uh, PM2.5, P, uh, PM uh, coarse, coarse PM, and also monitored cases, both uh, before the dilution, after dilution, uh, CO and CO2. Okay. Then I extract the, the filters uh, for ions and determining ion chromatography and extract the the filters with organic solvents, uh, acetonitrylene dichloromethane, and analyze that in gas with a gas chromatograph, with a mass spectrometry detector. So this to get the polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. Okay, so now we have the results uh, until now, so far. This is for this track. Uh, we see the average burn inside the, the genio quadros for a day, uh, which uh, where um, high dust vehicles are not allowed. So we have here uh, an increase of, of PM concentration in the peak hours, both here and here, when the average speed is lower and the number of vehicles is bigger. So, and here we have the, the chart for a day at Rodonel PM. We see, we see that uh, the 2.5 concentration increases uh, a lot with the, the high depth vehicles here, which are powered by uh, diesel engine. So, okay. and here we have particulate matter, both PM and PM 2.5 for the you know, campings, uh, for the whole campings. Here, uh, at PM, uh, the, the high one inside the you know, 2.5 inside the, the tunnels. And the lower lower hills are outside the tunnels. Uh, we have we see a reduction on weekend, and as expected, uh, all the concentrations uh, were above the limit for work organization inside the tunnels for PM2.5 and PM10, which are 25 to 50 micrograms per cubic meter. Well, here we have the PM emission factors for different different years 2004 2011 and 2018 we see an overall reduction in the last decades since uh, and this may uh, may be a, a, a successful action of the, the from the for the control of air pollution from automotive vehicles in Brazil so we see this this clear reduction mainly for PM2.5 here, uh, there's, there are results, results concerning water soluble ions. You can see that uh, at low, low depth vehicle, uh, tunnel, we can see magnesium and, and sodium, among others, uh, very higher concentrations inside. 
and at the high depth vehicle impact panel, calcium magnesium mainly, uh, but also sulfate. Uh, Interestingly, uh, interestingly uh, I saw that uh, ammonia and nitrate, which are secondary forming species, they were higher outside the tunnel. Well, um, well uh, calcium magnesium, uh, these higher concentrations inside the tunnels, they, they can be explained by uh, our dust, respiration, uh, and sodium, having previously associated to vehicular emissions and pavement participation in Sao Paulo. So that's why you can see the higher concentrations inside the, the low depth vehicle impact the tunnel. Here we have results for P8s in both tunnels, uh, at Quadros and Rodonel. We see at Rodonel a, a clear profile of three and four ring, ring P8, which, which can be associated to a uh, high depth vehicle profile. They emit more than this lower. Uh, Lower, lower weight P8. And here we have, uh, we see that in the low dirt vehicle, uh, there is a, a higher importance of the five and more rings, more, more rings P8, uh, which are uh, more heavy weight P8. And these heavy weight P8, they are more concerning to health uh, impact, since they are going to be more carcinogenic. And the total P8s, uh, for, uh, we can see that uh, in, the low dot, in the case of low dot vehicles, uh, they presented a lower concentration than previous, previous study uh, in 2011. The, 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 this value now, the, the total concentration was 21 nanograms per meter, and the, in the, the previous studies was 51. Well, here we have some black, black carbon results for the time. We see a presence of black carbon in quartz mold, uh, which it, uh, we're trying to understand yet, but it may be due to road dust resuspension. And overall, there was a threefold higher black carbon average carbon concentration for PM2.5 in the high depth vehicles, uh, with an average here of uh, around 13 micrograms per meter from high depth vehicles. Uh, the tunnel and 4.6 for the low dirty vehicles. It was lower than we observed before 11. Or you see the higher concentrations here. We have the road dust uh, concentration in micrograms per, per square meter. We see similar to the what we observed in the uh, low dirty vehicle, uh, uh, calcium uh, and, and sodium. Uh, and for the high depth vehicle, uh, an important uh, uh, concentration of calcium. Calcium is typically associated to road dust, and sodium, as I mentioned before, to vehicular emissions and pavement suspension. Here, we, I, I estimated this with suspensions, uh, emission factors, and they are much higher in the high depth vehicle, uh, uh, for the high depth vehicles here. Um, and roughly uh, estimated, uh, we can see that um, it may represent 17% of the emission factor uh, of, the, of, the, of this, the, this type of vehicles. Well, here we have results of uh, particulate matter, 10.5 micrograms per cubic meter. For the winter camp in 2019, we see that there was um, a lot of days where the the daily World Health Organization limit was uh, tested, but the, the, the average uh, 2.5 was lower than we observed before in 2014. So there was a reduction here, uh, two times. Ah, here, there was a black rain event uh, at Metropolitan Area during this, in this day. And it will be interesting when we have the, the chemical composition of the filters in, in those days. We have already uh, analyzed those, those, those rainwater samples. It's another study. Well, and here the, uh, there are results for 2.5 during the lockdown. A uh, few uh, samples are above the limit. Uh, a very low, a relatively low average PM2.5 compared to previous study of um, half of what was observed before in, uh, in 2014. Uh, well, in the summer here, uh, I can 
we can see we see in the slides that uh, interestingly uh, 2.5 and carbon creates reduce in the last decades with the you know, studies but there there is there is a important role this suspension contribution and this needs to be more more studied okay the perspectives of this work is to uh, there are some analysis to do yet um, elements of CHC and toxicological taste and uh, nitro oxypates were determined but they need that treatment all organic species too they were determined in Portugal robust they, they need um, more chemical analysis that it's being performed and uh, finally the cooking environmental campaigns uh, need chemical analysis that are being performed and after that uh, emission factors calculation for all the kinko species and with that uh, we'll have inventories emission maps with Spain and perform receptor model receptor models with uh, the PMF and and income mass balance and that's it uh, and, and also the nanometer sampling which is uh, going to be performed soon okay i would like to thank uh, all the institute the uh, the institute of astronomy uh, geophysics and uh, uh, of sciences the institute of chemistry uh, and also FAPESP and the university of sao paulo thank you that was my presentation Thank you, Guilherme. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, now uh, we are going to move to the atmospheric modeling, and I invite uh, Edmilson Freitas to do his presentation. And please put the questions here in the chat for us to discuss. Hi, everyone. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, we need to cancel the, the last presentation because we need to, I need to share the screen. Can you hear me? Guilherme, você poderia suspender a sua apresentação? Você não está apresentando. Desculpa. Guilherme, você, você para de apresentar a sua tela? Ei, é... ah, deixa eu ver aqui. Ah, estou trazendo, ah, desculpa. Pronto, já tirei. Obrigada. Achei que eu tivesse tirado, mas não. Ok. Okay, good afternoon. Uh, I'm going to show uh, some modeling uh, activities of the, the project. Uh, actually, uh, it's not only the modeling activities, but other uh, activities that are related in some way to the modeling. Um, uh, I'm going to present results from both of us, me and, and Leila Martins. Uh, starting with the objectives uh, of the project, Actually, the modeling part is almost everywhere in the project. Uh, we are at least in three of the, the main uh, objects, objectives of the project. And uh, we have been working and, and a lot of things, and I'm, I'm trying to show you uh, as fast as I can. Uh, I will start uh, talking about the work that we have been doing on preparation for the modeling which is an important part for every, everyone, not only for the, for the modeling group, but for other groups too, uh, especially when we are uh, thinking about the future. So uh, lots of the things that we, we did uh, are related to the creation of land use files. And uh, I'm going to show you some of this results for the present and for future. The first one was the uh, update of the urban uh, classification over the, the metropolitan area of Sao Paulo. Uh, this is a work from a PhD student, uh, Luana Macedo, which, which is almost finishing uh, her PhD. And this is just an example of the file that she created. 
uh, specifying different properties of the urban surface, which is important for uh, the modeling and also for the understanding of many processes uh, related to air pollution. Uh, Sergio Barra, which is a postdoc that worked with, with us, have uh, a lot of work developing his model, which most of, of you already know, the VEN model. Uh, and he has been uh, working a lot of improvements in the model. The model uh, has the intention to uh, produce the emissions from the many the vehicular emission using uh, the bottom-up uh, approach, but you can also use the top-down approach. Uh, and the idea is to represent the emissions by the whole bunch of uh, vehicles, light vehicles and trucks and buses and motorcycles, every, everything. So uh, the idea of the model is uh, to construct the emissions based on traffic simulation. This is a animation of the process that the model applies to represent the, the emissions. Here uh, on the left side, you can see the traffic simulation, which, which is provided by CET and SP Trends. And, uh, and it's updated based on the counts of vehicles on the, uh, made by uh, our test on the, some of the main uh, railroads uh, nearby Sao Paulo. Uh, this information is converted into emissions uh, in all these uh, streets and roads everywhere. And uh, the next step is to translate these emissions to the grid of the model grid. Here is the final result, as, and we can see how the emissions are represented uh, in the model grid. Uh, here you can see the this diurnal cycle of emissions, and that's the way that the model uh, works. Uh, more related to the our project, uh, Sergio also uh, has been working on the CO2 emissions. It's part of the, the, the whole bunch of emissions, but uh, one of the things that he uh, uh, did uh, in the last month was uh, to improve these emissions of uh, CO2. And this uh, figure shows you the evolution, uh, the di diurnal cycle of emissions uh, in the, already in the model grid. Uh, for uh, a specific, uh, not particular period, it's a general period, but uh, it's possible to specify, uh, to, uh, to choose some specific periods to, to do the same thing. One of the example, uh, we are talking about that yesterday, uh, the lockdown period, and this is one of the possibilities of the, his model. Uh, here we can see the emissions before the lockdown period and afterwards. And we, we can see, uh, based on the, the traffic and flow modeling, uh, that the, the CO2 concentrations of CO2 emissions were considerably uh, reduced in this period. It is clear here uh, in this figure. So uh, it's possible to choose specific periods uh, having the data from the traffic flow it's possible to create the, the same scenarios and make our simulations with their quality model. Uh, he's working on other things, and one of the, the things that he's been working is to introduce the, the way of the to, in substitution to the, the information by CAT, uh, provided by CAT and SP Trans, uh, also include the GPS and ways informations that uh, are available. It's not easy to get the data, but uh, we are trying to get this information to include in the model too. Uh, we did a lot of model verification. I just selected one example here. We have a simulation case for 2018, uh, April 2018. And uh, here we can see the comparisons between the model results and the observations collected by CETESB. Uh, these figures show the CO uh, evolution, the carbon dioxide concentrations evolution. For this period, we can see that the model is doing a very good job. The same thing we see for NOx, which is really hard to represent in the model. Usually we can represent ozone very well, but always uh, NOx is a, a problem. So it's something that is 
getting better in the model and we are, we are working on, on improving that result too. And finally, for ozone, uh, we can see uh, the same thing, some comparisons showing uh, good results for some stations. Uh, here we can see Nossa Senhora do Ó and Pinheiros, and, but the, the behavior is almost the same for all the stations over the metropolitan area of Sao Paulo. Uh, another thing that our group is doing uh, is uh, other types of simulation outside the, the urban areas because, as we know, last year we had a very good example of transport, pollutant transport over here in Sao Paulo. That case was specifically uh, due to biomass burning in the Amazon central Brazil, but uh, sugarcane is also uh, uh activity that provides a lot of uh, pollution for us and it's still uh although uh it's not uh possible to burn the sugarcane field uh we we have power plants that that burn that uh pr products of the sugarcane and still emitting that pollution to the air so uh leila did this uh, work with beatriz kawashima uh, and the idea was to simulate the effects of the emissions by thermoelectric plants uh, over uh, part of the Sao Paulo state. So she started doing that. And here are the domain of, uh, that she used. One of the things that we can improve in the simulations are the, the, the emissions, for the vehicular emissions, for example. She used the night light uh, time uh, emissions based file but uh, which is a very really nice uh, file very important especially when we don't have many information over uh, the region of interest but uh, it's something that we can improve however uh, uh, her result shows uh, some interesting things uh, here we can see that uh, the comparisons with observations are uh, something that can be improved yet, but it's just a pre preliminary result. But one thing that we can see here is the importance uh, on this left uh, figure here, we can see the combination of vehicular emissions and the power plant emissions. And we can see compared to the vehicular emissions only, which is in this uh, right panel here, uh, we can see that the contribution is, is significant. So it's something that she's uh, working on and probably she will have uh, more interesting results uh, in the future. Uh, to, in order to uh, verify the, our simulations, it's important not only to have the, the measurements inside the urban area, but also it's important to have some verification outside the urban areas, which we, we don't have in general. So, uh, we are working in a mobile laboratory uh, located not only one, two actually. One is uh, right now it's located uh, here in, uh, at USP and another one is in Rio de Janeiro doing almost the same measurements. Uh, it's a very complete laboratory. Uh, last uh, acquisition for the laboratory was the black carbon uh, monitor. Uh, but we are measuring almost everything in this laboratory. So uh, we are using this data to understand how uh, the pollution travels uh, from place to place. And uh, this is a, a, just a comparison between two of the uh, equivalent equipments that we have uh, in our laboratory. Uh, one is located uh, in La Pace, and the other one is the, in the model, mobile laboratory. We can see a uh, very good agreement uh, between the two measurements, which is expected. Uh, and we are doing measurements in different places. We already did measurements in uh, here at USP, in Botucatu, uh, Londrina, Rio de Janeiro. Uh, we were planning to uh, make some measurements this year in San José dos Campos, but because of the pandemic, it was not possible. So we still measuring here inside IAG. Uh, some results from Botucatu, very interesting, uh, just related to ozone. I'm not going to show you all the, the results, but uh, we can see a very important feature that we observed not only in Botucatu, but in Londrina and other uh, places 
uh, outside the, the very urbanized area. Here we can see uh, for Botucatu the mean concentrations of ozone and you can see uh, not only that the concentrations are higher, higher than in Ibirapuera, for example, but uh, at night the behavior is totally different from the, what we usually see inside the urban area. Uh, the same thing we see uh, if we compare, for example, uh, uh, Cetese site, uh, which is located in Pico do Jaraguá, it's almost the same pattern that we can see in Botucatu. And when we go to Londrina, the results are very similar. The, the behavior of the ozone concentrations are very different from the ones that we usually see inside the urban areas, which is something uh, that we are working on, uh, studying. It's a, a paper that we are uh, writing right now. Uh, Rafael Pesato and uh, Thiago Nogueira are the main uh, uh, authors of this, this uh, paper. Uh, about future uh, scenarios, which is important for one of the objectives of the project, we did a lot of things. One of the things that we did was uh, to simulate possible scenarios to uh, verify the benefits of the Proconvi program. So we made some simulations for the future. The future for us is 2036. And here we can see the difference of the emissions or, or the concentrations provided by Wolfgang model in combination with Veng model. Uh, here we have 2016 as a reference and we simulate the same period but using some characteristics of 2036. We can see that without Proconv, if only we consider the renew of the fleet, uh, already is enough to decrease the concentration, the ozone concentrations in, in many stations that we uh, compared. But when we apply the new regulations uh, required by the new PROCOM phases, uh, we can see a very significant reduction of the ozone concentrations. The same will uh, apply to uh, carbon oxide, NOx, and other pollutants, except for particulate matter. Uh, for future centers, uh, it's very important to have the, the boundary condition to simulate properly the atmosphere. Uh, Tamiris Brandão, which is a, a postdoc that was, is working with us, uh, made some evaluations of the uh, semi 5 uh, scenarios uh, over the metropolitan area. Actually, it's the, over the met macro metropolis of Sao Paulo, it's a, a larger area, uh, but that includes the metropolitan area of Sao Paulo. And she compared a lot of uh, models that are uh, part of the semi 5 uh, program. And what she found uh, was that the MIP-5 models have a very good, uh, they are very good at representing the extreme magnitudes of precipitation and temperature. Uh, and another future, feature that is really important because the uh, transition of the atmosphere is the decadal evolution of extreme uh, temperature events. Why we are focusing on temperature? Because temperature is mostly uh, the driver of most of the uh, atmospheric circulation. So we are verifying uh, how the models uh, behave and how good are the results from, from these models to apply in the future. Uh, the same for precipitation, because for uh, uh, easy, uh, reasons uh, we can understand the importance of precipitation. So uh, she also analyzed this, and actually uh, the models are better for temperature than precipitation as expected, but it gives us some confidence on the future simulations that we are going to do. Uh, it's important to uh, consider the, the urban growing, uh, because urban growth is associated also with population growing and this will change everything especially the urban, urban hill island effects so uh, we work on that uh, we made some simulations considering future scenarios for urbanization and this is one of the bases for our work uh, this this figure is from uh, andrea Yangi. 
2011 shows in this yellow area here what could be the urbanized area of the metropolitan area of Sao Paulo. The, uh, the prognosis here uh, shows us that most of the 39 uh, municipalities of the metropolitan area of Sao Paulo are going to be urbanized. So we made some simulations uh, trying to show what happens if this growing uh, really happens. So we made some simulation considering this uh, red area here, always uh, this, this region was uh, urbanized with constructions and buildings and houses and, and everything. So the results for our simulations were, were based in a thunderstorm case and uh, again, uh, what we were trying to do was to simulate the atmospheric circulations and a very good example of atmospheric circulation is related to thunderstorms. So this is the real thunderstorm uh, that we analyzed. And here we can see how this thunderstorm could be uh, if this whole area here in, in red were, were uh, urbanized. We can see that there is a significant increase and in showing the influence of the urban, the urban areas over the precipitation, which is very important. And the final thing that I want to show you, uh, which is, I, I think it's uh, incredible work from Carolina uh, Machado, Carolina Machado, uh, which is uh, uh, devoted to the, the future simulations. And you are going to see why I'm so uh, happy with this uh, result. Uh, we know that the land use evolutes really fast, especially when we have a lot of people in the area. This, this figure shows the evolution from 1872, 1950, and 2010. We can see the changes, the very impressive change. About 35% of the, the territory uh, was uh, anthropized. So uh, it's a lot of things. Uh, what Caroline did was to simulate how this land use, land cover changes along the time. Here we can see uh, the real map for the, the change uh, based on map biomas, which are a database that is available, uh, showing the difference between 1985 and 2015. Uh, starting from, from 1985, we used a model called uh, Dynamic uh, Eagle, uh, Eagle Dynamic, or something like that. And the idea of the model is to consider a lot of uh, features of the, the region, uh, such as topography, uh, land use, the soil type, the, the distance from a specific, a specific point to a road, uh, from a river, from a elevation. Lots of features are considering the model, uh, preserve the areas, topography, everything is considering the model to uh, prognose the evolution of the, the land use. And she applied this model. I, I can give you more details afterwards if you want. Um, but what she did was this. Uh, this is the land use uh, observed and provided by map biomas. And this one is the one that she simulated starting from 1985 going to 2015. And as you can see, although it's not 100% perfect, actually the global accuracy is around 67%, the model does a very good job. And what's the idea? The idea is to apply this model to create a land use file for 2015 or even a longer period of time. She did that already. And this is the result for the metropolitan area of Sao Paulo, actually for the macro metropolis of Sao Paulo. Actually, she, she did the work for the, the whole area, including the, the Paraná River Basin, which is really large. But for us, what she, is important is to analyze this region here. We can see all the cities uh, are bigger right now in, in 2050. And this file will be available for everyone to make their simulations based on the future. So it's a great result and very consistent results. We analyzed the, 
protected areas and other features of the, the, ter the terrain in, in the area, we can see that the, the result is very correct. So it's a great result. Uh, here is just the proportion of the, the growing of each area. We can see here in, in, in red the, how much the urban areas will grow. And it's a very interesting result. So what's the next step? Uh, we want to implement this actual uh, file made by Luana Macedo. And this file uh, that I just showed you, just make some simulations with WorthKin. Uh, the idea is to model selected cases based on the surface network measurements of greenhouse gases. And also, we want to uh, use the CMIP 5 or CMIP 6, which is, uh, will be available soon, uh, to, our, uh, to provide the boundary conditions for uh, the atmospheric models. So uh, that's it. It was, I, I have to show you. But uh, before I finish, I, I would like to share you a very important thing. Uh, it's a work from Professor Leila, uh, which was published uh, when? Yesterday, yes, uh, on, on Monday. Uh, she is developing uh, some masks for uh, protect people. And I, I think it's important to share that with you. She can give us uh, more details on that. She's watching this presentation. So thank you for your attention and congratulations to Professor Leila. Thank you. Thank you, Jimiso. Thank you very much. Oh, Leila would like to talk a little bit about your masks with this fiber. I'll explain a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly the right moment, but uh, this is uh, developed uh, based on a cellulose acetate that you use a, a lateral spinning. This is a processor that converts something like that in uh, nanofibers, and these nanofibers have a high efficiency to, uh, to retain particles in a nanometer scale. Uh, and you use these nanofiber as a, um, uh, as a filter mask. And these first uh, prototypes and very... <laughs> it means so put this, but I think it's the very, <laughs> the right moment. <laughs> but in fact, all, all of these, this is a, these results, in fact, about the nanofibers is still published in a, in a paper by Daniela, Daniela, that finished the PG recently, and she, she already published this result, and I can share with you uh, the, the link for everyone after <laughs> in the chat. I think it's a, a very important work, because especially right now that we are facing a, a very difficult moment uh, with the society, which needs uh, to see what is being doing uh, at the university. And I, I, I. not only here in Sao Paulo, Sao Paulo right now it's facing a very difficult moment, but it's a national problem. So it's important to show to the people that uh, we are working to improve the uh, life quality of the whole society. Everything that we do is related to that. So this is a really important work. Yeah. Thank you. Congratulations, yes, that's really, that's really true. Okay, uh, we have some questions here, but we are going to, to have time for questions at the end. I think it's better. And then I'd like now to invite Rita and Rafaela Cruz to make their presentations about the emissions modeling. Okay. Can you see? Yes, we can see, Rafaela. Thank you. Okay. My name is Rafaela Alves. I am a PhD student at the University of Sao Paulo, and my advisor is Hitinoui. 
Today, I'm going to present a little bit about my PhD project and some things I have worked in this moment. So, my project title is a Greenhouse Gases Emission and Dispersion Modeling at the Metropolitan Area of Sao Paulo. I start, I start by presenting the flow chart to identify uh, my MZ fin in the Metroclima project, as you can see in the highlighted uh, area. And so my project aim is to simulate biogenic and anthropic emissions and dispersion with a worth GH model. Evaluate this model based on measurements made in the field within Metroclima project. Compare the contributions of biogenic and biogenic and anthropic sources of a GH in the MESP. And study the impacts of a different emission scenarios on GH concentration in the MESP using the model. Now talk a little bit about emission inventory. The IPCC report shows the sectors that contribute most to global GHG's emissions are. The first sector is energy, with 35% responsible for burning fossil fuels. The second, land use change, forestry, for, uh, land use change, forestry and agriculture. The next is industrial process, transport and construction sectors. However, when we change the study area, uh, this percentage changes. The emission inventory for Brazil shows the sector that contributes the most in land use change with 60% uh, of GAG emissions. Following agriculture and pasture, energy, industry, and waste sectors. For the state of Sao Paulo, the emission inventory shows that the energy sectors contributes more than half of the GAG emissions. The second sector is agriculture and livestock with 21%. For the metropolitan area of Sao Paulo, the contributions of the energy is uh, 85%. And from this energy share, 70% uh, of its emissions is responsible, responsible for transport, transportation activities, 20% uh, for the transformation industry, and only 10% for uh, energy generation. This table is presented in the inventor for Sao Paulo City, showing GAG emissions for water bodies. This information is not always uh, found in inventories. Is the major uh, source of reported em emissions are anthropic. These graphics were represented yesterday by Carlos Oliveira. It shows a dif uh, the difference in the contributions of SERS to the issue of a GAG. It is noted that uh, for, for both UNICID and the ING stations, the carbon dioxide concentrations of a vehicular source are vehicular source are, high, are higher than the concentrations of a biogenic source of both normal and the lockdown days. Emission inventories are very important for modeling air quality, and models depend on reliable emission put which should describe as much as possible of anthropic sources, be consistent in time and space, and provide the best scientific estimate for the emission. In addition, they need to be specially and temporarily disaggregated to be used as input in the model. In summary, greenhouse gases, biogenic emission, and anthropic emission are required to the modeling. I present some global emission data of biogenic sources available for modeling now. One example is MEGAN. MEGAN is a modeling system for estimate the net emission rate of isoprene and other trace gases and aerosols from a terrestrial ecosystem into the atmosphere. 
It is driven by the land cover, weather, and atmospheric chemical composition. Other, other example is the model VPRM. Calculates the CO2 flow by a photosynthesis and vegeta, vegetable briefing. Is the action shows below the next exchange of a CO2. CO2 is a sum the growth exchange of the ecosystem with respiration. This model uses meteorological fields from WORF and high-resolution satellite indices. To simulate a biosphere, a CO2 fluxes. With a realistic special temporal and patterns. Several attempts were made with the VPRM, but without success. So, as future step will be production of a CO2 flow calculation model to be inserted in the WORF GAG. Now I'm going to talk about anthropic emissions inventory. Edgar and Hetero are examples. Both provide global annual emissions for several greenhouse gases, as well as some precursor gases. The Hetero emission inventory contains anthropic, emissions anthropic and, bioma and biomass burning. For the years 1960 to 2000, at a 0.5 degree and more temporary resolution. The Edgar is a global product which calculates the total emission of pollutants for each country and distributes this total emission, especially and a temporary according to proxy data. The result inventory is a compilation exocopo opposite to a consistent inventory calculated using activity data and emission factors. The definition uh, of the anthropic emission sectors were based on IPCC. The emission of uh, pollutants and the GAGs in the metropolitan region of Sao Paulo, as been before, is a mainly from a vehicular circuit. <laughs> I'm sorry, vehicular source. These emissions are calculated from information estimated number of vehicles, emissions factors, and the average number of kilometers traveled. Example of this model apart and GV. This table was obtained for the last annual report of vehicle emissions of CETESM. Environmental Company, State of São Paulo. It shows as estimate of the number of vehicles that circulated through the state and metropolitan regions. It should be noted that half of the total vehicles circulating in the state of São Paulo are in the MESP, which represent only 3% of the Paulista territory. This table shows the emission factors obtained through the tuna experiments carried out in São Paulo that are used to estimate total CO2 emissions. Ibarra's work shows a strong correlation between CO and CO2 for vehicle emission sources. Thus, uh, simulated CO concentrations can be a parameter evaluated as comparative to CO2 emissions. The emissions generated by the local model uh, is model Apache, were those, you know, those presented in the table, highlighting the total emissions for CO and CO2. The image shows the distribution of total CO2 emissions. You can see that the hotter colors are concentrated in the metropolitan region, Rio de Janeiro, Belo Horizonte, and Curitiba. The table below shows the total CO, CO and CO2 emissions for the metropolitan region. It is noted that the values obtained by CETESB are much lower 
than those obtained by the local model. This difference is related to the domain area used for LAPACH model emissions, and this total is not only co uh, caught in the metropolitan region of Sao Paulo, but the surround the area. To model with WORFCAN, the meteorological conditions used in the simulations were the operational model global tropospheric analysis. This information uh, has a horizontal resolution one degree and 27 vertical levels and a six hour available ever. Two simulations were performed for the same domain and period to April 1st of 2006. The first simulation used the Edgar emissions for pollens described here and for and for biogenic emissions, the mega inventory. The second simulation used the local vehicle emission model. Factors emissions, volatile organic compounds speciation, which were obtained by LAPACH. Vehicle activities were obtained by CETESB report for the simulated year and special distribution by street density. And and for biogenic emissions, also the mega inventory. Uh, the preliminary results. Next, there's uh, two GIF show results of simulations performed for a seal concentrations on the surface. For the simulations, for the simulation that use Edgar emissions on the left, a higher concentration of a CO are evident in some points uh, on the grid. The metropolitan region of Sao Paulo is easy to locate with the most accentuated colors in this direction. For the simulator using the Lepache emissions, there is a concentration of a CO distributed throughout the area of the domain but it also shows the same points of the grid as that of Edgar with a higher concentration. However, uh, where compared the animations, it is noted that the simulated concentration of the left GIF are higher than those simulated by the on on the right GIF, different from expected. Keep in mind that uh, these are preliminary results, to test emission data simulation by the model Wolfkin. The next steps to be taken are to be able to estimate CO2 emissions for biogenic and mobile source, and they run, and they run the Wolf JAG for the MESP, and validate the simulated data with observed CO2 data from uh, satellite and uh, surface stations. I uh, would like to thank your attention and thank you and the advice for all poss uh, possible contributions. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Rafaela. Uh, it was uh, really nice to have the presentations. Uh, I don't know if uh, Hito wants to talk some, to complement something or not. No, I think that was pretty much what we were doing. Uh, I just wanted to highlight that Rafaela worked a lot with VPRM, but she she couldn't run it. So we're thinking, we're, uh, thinking that uh, we are planning to, to make some biogenic modeling just like we did with the mobile sources. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Rita. Uh, uh, now uh, I'm opening for the question. I, I can see here that we have some questions, but uh, people are answering here, but maybe some discussions more. Uh, um, well, we start with the presentation from Guilherme. Bernard make an uh, uh, observation here about the comparison uh, between 2011 and 2018 about emission factors. But I think uh, uh, 
Um, it was answered. Uh, do you like to make any comment, Guilherme? So, do you, you hear me? Uh, yeah. Uh, about uh, the, the comments of Leonardo, uh, well, the, the, the results from 2011 uh, for emission factors in the low vehicle tunnel, uh, they were uh, calculated in another way. Differently from uh, it was not calculated with the with a filter concentration, you know. That's why they are they are lower than, than expected. Ah, okay. Okay, understand. Yes, it was with uh, I think the PM measured uh, automatically, not with the It was, it was an estimation. It was an estimation. So. You see that the, those that, that chart uh, it showed uh, a reduction in 2011 and increased a little bit uh, in 2000 now 2018. No, it, um, because it was calculated in a different way. Okay. Okay. Is this another question? Not here in the chat. Uh, is there an, an, another question for Guilherme? Ah, okay. Um, I want to ask a question, a quick question, if it's okay. <laughs> yeah, please. Uh, Guilherme, uh, nice results. Oh. I was just wondering if, uh, have you measured zinc in the, also in the filters? Uh, I think they are starting, uh, they start being measured now. Uh, we started uh, analyzing it at the Field of Geosciences with Chicago, no? And okay. I think Chicago, zinc was yeah, the primary. I the reason okay the reason why i'm asking is just because i found the road dust a little bit um well i think it could be other things than road dust what you found uh, related to sodium you said oh sodium. actually calcium and then you found phosphate right and yeah, uh and so i think uh, well we have seen many in, um for example mostly related to heavy the diesel like uh, usually we see, for example, calcium, sodium, phosphate, and also sulfate, which probably you didn't look at the moment, but relate to lubricating oil instead of road dust. So I'm wondering if that could be related to the, you know, what you're calling maybe road dust. Maybe you could have a mixture in there uh, also containing lub oil, lubricating oil, or some additives. Because lub oil is really made out of uh, sulfur, uh, phosphate, and a lot of organic stuff. So it's just a suggestion. Yes, I'm out. Uh, well, thank you. Do you have a, a reference to Barry? Uh, new books there, please. It would be interesting to compare. Yeah. Okay. Yes, do, do you know? So we had uh, uh, here notes that about the contribution from Lub Oil this phosphor and sulfate because mm -hmm. they are usually at the emissions factors and also in the concentration. Um, but uh, this kind of raw dust is a mixture because it's uh, measuring side tunnels and also in, in, a, in, a, in a hole, but then I think it's mixed with the sediments and also this uh, brake wear, tire wear and all the emissions from the cars that's yeah, you have too many yeah. missions in there, too many sources in there. <laughs> I'll mix it, yes, but it's yeah. a, a good observation that it's better to make it more clear when you put that this uh, whole dust because it's, uh, it's a mixture of uh, many, 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 many things there. Yeah, yeah, fine. Uh, thanks for the observation. Uh, I think uh, zinc was determined, uh, for sure. Yeah, it was. I, I need to check after. Yes, yes, yes. It, it is, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that would be useful. Jolene asked a question about the toxicological assays. Uh, this is going to be performed in Portugal. Uh, there are two kinds of uh, assays. Uh, I don't remember much now, but one of them is, is with the polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons fraction of the distraction. I think it's with cells. I, I need to check and, and I put the reference here. Okay. Okay, oh. and uh, as, uh, anyone wants to make a, another question to Guilherme? Uh, 
questions. Well, we had some questions um, to Edmilson here, um, but I think Edmilson has answered the questions about the urban classification, the algorithm that was used. Would you like to complement the answer? Yeah, I can, I can talk about that. Uh, we use the Landsat 8 uh, images and we use the ArcGIS uh, software to classificate the, the images by uh, region growing. You know, it's kind of a cluster analysis. And after we classificate the images without to, uh, concerning uh, what, which type of urban area you have there, you just create a file with the different features of the surface based on the hydrometric measurements, uh, hydrometric uh, characteristics of the image. And afterward, we can analyze by photograph, by field uh, evaluation. But what we are, what we are doing uh, with most of the, the, the files that we have is to use uh, photograph the eye fish, uh, eye uh, lens and uh, to create the uh, sky view factor. And based on the sky view factor, which is the parameter that the model use, we uh, classificate the type of urban area. So that's the, the procedure. I don't know if it's clear. Paul Locke uh, have uh, asked that. And well, the other question was made by Alain. And Alain was working, uh, asking uh, if it's possible to use the, the VIN model uh, without the observer traffic data. Uh, we have other options for that. But if you have this information, of course, it will be better. But in fact, the information, it's not very precise because uh, most of the, the counts, for example, are not made inside the city. Of course, the traffic modeling uh, provided by CET and SP Trans, they, they have uh, uh, lots of places that they count, uh, but uh, not all the, the places. Uh, if you use, for example, uh, GPS or the Waze uh, database, of, uh, you have, I think you have a much better uh, estimation of the traffic flow. But it's something to, to develop, yes. It's not working. Mm -hmm. oh, thank you. Uh, Caroline is asking Guilherme which toxicological essays uh, are you planning to use for PM? Oh, I, I think I answered. Uh, it was it could be performed in Portugal, probably. Uh, one of them is if the organic fraction of the site, and I think it's if cells, uh, it, it will be exposure to cells. Uh, I think, and the other one is that is a new one. Uh, they are starting to perform there, and it was they started in Hungary, and they start doing now in Portugal. I need to check the and put a reference reference here because I'm not in the field of uh, archaeological studies and I need to, to check it. Uh, okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, Thiago <laughs> made a comment to Rafaela that the concentration values for you from La Parte, from La Parte model, appear to be more consistent than, than Edgar, than Edgar invented. Yes. I don't know if you have something. Rafaela, can you answer that? Uh, actually, we think that the, for the CO concentration, uh, Edgar was better than the Laparte uh, emissions. We are still not sure why, but we we are viewing that the Laparte emissions uh, end with low concentrations of CO. We have to figure out why it's going that way. Even when we compare with the TED? Yes. Alejandro and Wally are getting the same results, so we have to figure out what's going on. Mm, okay. But the emissions uh, from Edgar is only from vehicles or consider all kind of sources? 
I think for this simulation was only vehicle, vehicle oh, okay. sources, yes. But they were just more concentrated, so I think the concentrations were higher because of that. Mm. Okay, okay. Uh, we need to check that because uh, it's one of the points that must be more consistent than even for CO2. Yes. You have to have this CO to have more, you have CO2 also. That's why I finally started uh, working with WorthCam before working with WorthGAG because we have more expertise in uh, emission in modeling the CO emissions. So we wanted to start there and then go to CO2. Okay, that's perfect. Um, yeah. One thing that I, I like to ask, but it's uh, to admit so. This, these simulations consider the new scenarios, and then we showed that about the, using the map biomas. Uh, for the future, what are the main, uh, main, main parameters that you have to consider? It's population, and it's some um, economic... Uh, yes, uh, it's population, the topography. Uh, let me show you everything. Uh, soil type topography, the distance from topography, water bodies, roads, protected areas, and urban sectors. We also need to know about the urban growth rate, uh, pastures, and agriculture, the distance from these uh, areas. The hydrography of the region is also necessary. So okay. it's a very complex model. It's ah, I, I forgot to tell, but uh, it, it, the model was developed at, at uh, UFMG, uh, Universidade Federal de Minas Gerais. Uh, and it's a, a model that was developed to simulate the evolution of vegetation of the Amazon initially. But now we are applying here. Yeah, nice. But then it will make a lot of difference in the new scenarios for future. No, when you because yes. we are considering these these uh, scenarios uh, for ozone CO or the, in the future, but only uh -huh. no, not taking into account the surface. The, the, uh -huh. This will make a lot of difference. Then. Yes. Yeah. As I showed uh, in the case of the thunderstorm. Mm -hmm. uh, it is very important for the whole uh, pattern of the atmospheric circulation. And also, uh, if we uh, consider the biogenic emissions uh, by, veg by vegetation uh, and other processes, it will be important for simulating properly the future. Okay. Even if we consider the, the fleet growth, Mm -hmm. uh, we, we have to distribute the, the, the cars in the fleet, uh, in the, the roads, you yeah. know, so yeah. it will change the, the emissions in that case too. Mm, that's very important. Questions? If some, uh, someone wants to ask in Portuguese, it's okay, because then we can translate here. Well, uh, uh, well, I I I have here one, one another question to Guilherme about um, the secondary pollutants. In the in the slide, you showed that uh, it was nitrate and ammonium that was higher outside the tunnel. Is that yeah. true? But outside the tunnel. And sulfate, also no. Sulfate, uh, it, it's interesting. It was higher inside the tunnel. Uh, Maybe because there is, uh, uh, as uh, I think, as, uh, as Amara, I think, uh, the, maybe influence of lubricant oil uh, or something that deposits on the on the wow. yeah. we could not uh, listen here. Uh, uh, you can hear. Uh, now, no, yes, it, it, it was uh, cut some points. 
I don't know. I, I need to uh, to think about the the, the higher sulfur inside. Maybe it's maybe it's the yeah lubricant oil or emission from from vehicles or. Okay, it's nice to, to think about that. Okay. Sulfur, not sulfate. Okay. Right, it's something to think about, I think. Yeah. Uh, Ismael, you made a, a question. I, I think maybe, uh, I don't know. Uh, Ismael asked if atmospheric compression for CO2 and um, stage 4 urban emissions part of the project. Well, when we wrote the, the project, we put that at the end, the idea is to check the data and to check the modeling with uh, uh, inversion, inversion modeling for CO2 and methane, even using satellite data. This is an idea for the end of the project when we have uh, more the data and also we could analyze the satellite and also have the modeling. But this is a, a one point that we include in the in the in the project, yes. But until now, we don't have any anyone working on that. Well, if someone wants to work on that, <laughs> we, we would love to have more people uh, working with us. Uh, thanks, thanks for your answer. Uh, I think it's really great that you guys also have that part in the project. And I know you, you guys just started your measurements, but uh, just wanted to know. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Uh, yes, we put, we include that, but you know, uh, we include many, many, many things, not only for the greenhouse, but also for the pollutants, emissions, and and uh, modeling. And uh, it's difficult to to go in now in our aspects, but this is uh, in in our diagram. It's one of the last things that we include. Okay. Uh, Daniel, make a, a question here or a comment. Uh, I had a little good talk about atmospheric mode. I wonder if this land use data is available now for use. Uh, where you can find this data if it is available. Daniel is asking. Daniel Shu. Oh, we can provide the data. Uh... The the one for the future, you mean, Daniel? Yes, and and for the uh, the present. For the present, uh, we are just working on the the classification of each urban type because we need to define the characteristics of the, each type. But mm -hmm. as soon as uh, Luana finishes, we can provide to you that file. It will be. Nice freely available for everyone. Mm -hmm. Nice. Because the default data for Brazil is not always with uh, yeah. good quality. Yeah, for I know. Many yeah, the idea is uh, to uh, combine with the original file from USGS and combine the all, only the urban uh, features because we don't have any, many information about the type of vegetation so it will not be uh improvement so but you can use yes okay thank you thank you let's see if we have another questions okay uh, let me see here in the youtube no now, if someone wants to make any comment or, or no, uh, then I think, uh, uh, okay, Guilherme is also including here a comment to Caroline about the essays for the mutagenesis and carcinogenesis. Okay. Thank you, Guilherme. Well, uh, I'd like to thank everybody for the participation, for the questions, for the contributions. It was uh, really nice. It's nice for us also to have this feedback for in, in the group. Um, we, we will try to, to keep some of these uh, small meetings 
that we are going to uh, present the, the results that we have, and then it will help, help the project to, to go more uh, smoothly, you know, because we know what everybody is doing, and then changing the data and the, uh, the uh, also uh, the difficulties and the questions, and then we go uh, further in our research. And then I would like to thank if someone wants to make any comment. Uh, otherwise, I would like to thank the presence and the, the participation of everybody. And thank you for the speakers. It was really nice. I know that it's a, a lot of effort to put everything in small, in small presentations. Thank you very much. <laughs>